do developers have to worry about breaking their workflow or the way they work differently when they are also targeting edge use cases? Or Lightbin is making it so easier for them that it really doesn't matter whether they are targeting a data center or edge use cases? That, that's what we talk about when it's a single programming model from the edge to the cloud is that you get um, you know, the developer workflow that you want once to build all the different components of your system and then it needs to deploy. Hi, this is your host, Bharatiya, and we are here at KubeCon in Paris. And today we have with us Tyler Jewell, CEO of Lightband. Tyler, it's great to have you on the show. Hey, thank you for having me, Swap. It's my pleasure. I mean, we have been covering Lightband for a very long time. I talk to Jonas almost all the time. Uh, so we have also seen the evolution of company. But since you are here, so I would like to hear in these, you know, like 10, 15 years, as long as the company has been around and you have been heading the company, how you have seen the ecosystem evolve and how you have seen the company evolve with that ecosystem. Lightbend is now a 15 year old company. I'm the fourth CEO of the company. It just started a couple of months ago and it was started by a brilliant distributed systems technologist called Jonas Bonet out of Sweden. And he originally just wanted to solve some really basic problems about how you deal with concurrency on multi-threaded, multi-core systems, which was a real problem for developers back in uh, the late 2000s, uh, before the 2010s. And it turns out that his approach to solving multi-concurrency issues was to create a type of abstraction that works brilliantly well in distributed systems. And so he's built up this technology stack into an entire platform that allows you to build distributed applications that serve low latency to end users. What is the vision that you are bringing to the company as you are taking over the helm of the company? Where are you going to take Lightbend? The great thing about uh, the, what Lightbend's able to do is we can scale to almost any degree while maintaining ultra low latency in a very deterministic fashion. This means that we can do hundreds of millions of concurrent users with uh, really great performance. Um, and our systems have shockproof resilience, meaning they never go down, they never fail. We've never had a SEV1 outage in the history of the company. Um, uh, this type of architecture historically has only been reserved for the top 1%, the systems that could afford uh, building out this sort of massive system. And our, our vision is that we're gonna be able to deliver a platform here where every developer, regardless of their skill set, can create equal, equal systems of equal capability in under a day. You have used the word, you know, low latency a couple of times. Low latency could mean a lot of things different, depending on the scenario that we're talking about. You also talk about, you know, edge, to, you know, cloud to edge continuum. So there are a couple of things that I want to talk about is that, uh, what do you mean by cloud to edge? In our case, when we're talking about low latency, it's the time that it takes a user to get a response back from the service that they're interacting with. Um, and in a lot of database systems, data-driven systems, latency really gets uh, laggy because the data is in a central location, users are located all, all over the different places, um, and it's very inconsistent. Uh, we have a model which makes the latency very consistent because we push the microservices as close to the end users as possible and they get a very even response time. Uh, historically, this sort of model was only viable if you were going to build a cloud system, meaning that the microservices resided inside of your cloud, inside of a couple of your data centers, far away from end users. Um, but we're working towards a world where there's going to be billions of pops, uh, every, every edge uh, telco, uh, oftentimes many homes, are going to actually be places that your microservices can run. And historically, if you wanted to put any sort of business logic in a edge scenario or in your home or on your phone, you needed to have a different kind of programming model on how you, uh, for what you put out there versus what you're programming in the cloud. Jonas's concept of the cloud to edge continuum is a single programming model that creates business logic and data that works anywhere and operates anywhere along that continuum. Uh, program once, distribute everywhere. And does it really depend on uh, the, what kind of edge you're, we're talking about? Because edge, you know, it could be a sensor on top of a mountain, you know, it could be a retail, and you know, there's so many different use cases for the edge. Yeah. Does it depend on the hardware? Does it depend on the cloud provider? Or it doesn't really matter because it brings the cloud native 
architecture native portability. The really only this dif different issue about the edge is that there's just limited resources out there, both compute, I.O., memory, um, and they're a further distance away from the centralized cloud. So there's a, there's a geographic distance that you have to address and maybe some reliability issues that are there. So, uh, but given the way that we work, when, when developers build applications with our architecture, they create microservices, and inside those microservices has state and memory and compute and communications inside of it. And so as long as we can get that small enough, um, that microservice has the ability to relocate to any location that it needs to be. And we've just been able over the years to shimmy it down to a micro footprint. And because we can get these microservices that are operating on IoT devices where there's only a couple of megabytes of RAM, and yet they're still participating in a distributed cluster with microservices that are back in the cloud. One programming model, but you can deploy it in any kind of different location. And are there any specific use cases that you're targeting when you talk about Edge? Particularly, yes, um, two types of use cases. One, large uh, edge synchronization issues. So, uh, for example, Tesla, Tesla has built out a power charging network, uh, which you know, each of the power charging nodes needs to be in synchronization with other local power charging nodes. That's a, uh, there's a, they, we have a converging data mesh under the cover that synchronizes those things. And then the other use case is um, IoT to cloud where you're building large IoT substrates and you need to have a, uh, a continuous, uh, reliable uh, cloud co connection to the microservices that are running in the cloud. It bridges those two worlds. Do developers have to worry about breaking their workflow or the way they work differently when they are also targeting edge use cases? Or Lightbin is making it so easier for them that it really doesn't matter whether they are targeting a data center or edge use case? That, that's what we talk about when it's a single programming model from the edge to the cloud is that you get um, you know, the developer workflow that you want once to build all the different components of your system and then it needs to deploy. Now, the reality is, is that the function of the microservice on the IoT device is different than the function than the one you're running in the cloud. So you still have to build two microservices, but you do it the same style. You just have to push one to the cloud and push the other one over to the to the edge device. And then they cluster together. And what does it mean for the operations DevOps teams who are managing these R? One of the nice things about this is that since our microservices embed all the infrastructure that they need, they, they, they support any type of runtime infrastructure or container management. So the operators just see this as a bunch of um, uh, instances that they have to deploy and manage on, and push out, but they don't need to worry about the operational details once they've been pushed out to the edge. It's March, it's almost the beginning of the year. We can still say beginning of the year. A lot of things are in your pipeline, which you cannot discuss because we'll talk about it when it's ready for the press. But just give us a glimpse that when we look at Lightband, when we look at 2024, what are the things we can expect from you folks? One, you know, we're going to make it possible that all these distributed systems are also zero trust. So zero trust and security is a big theme of where we're going to be focusing this year. Um, and then the second thing is, is that we have a cloud offering and a uh, manage it yourself offering, and we're working to unify those into one product. What does security mean when we are pushing things to the edge? You have to have a higher bar for making sure that the images that you're pushing out to the edge have been uh, verified, scanned, built uh, against the secure software development framework, that's a big deal. Two, anything that you're pushing out to the edge is going to have a variety of networking uh, dependencies back as because it's clustering and communicating back. Uh, you need to make sure that those uh, uh, MTLS, certificate rotation, uh, being able to do a true zero trust enforcement to things that are far out on the edge where you don't have the management uh, reach every each and every day, because it's in a disconnected way, you have to be able to address that so that you get a, a true zero trust environment. The biggest buzzword these days is generative AI LLMs. Uh, from Lighten's perspective, what kind of scope do you see of LLMs, Gen AI for you folks? In order to build these sort of massively distributed systems in this way, there's a lot of, uh, you have to use an event-driven architecture, which is kind of at the heart of what we're doing. And uh, most developers still struggle with the, uh, the concept of what it means to be programming with events, which is asynchrony, decoupling. And uh, now that we see AI, Gen AI coming online, its predominant benefit is going to be to help uh, create structures and help you build these systems 
And I think there's a op big opportunity there to teach AI systems how to design event-driven systems and, and teach it how to think in an asynchronous decoupled manner, which is generally not what's well understood. Tyler, thank you so much for taking time out today. And great insights there about you know, what Lightband is doing, the whole cloud to edge continuum. And I will look forward to talk to you again soon. I thank look you. forward to it, Swap. Well.